So Apathetic Race is an animated show made by Brendan Blaber, or as he goes by on YouTube, Joe Apocalypse. You probably know him from his So This Is Basically or Reviewed in 10 Words or Less series. And while Apathetic Race was airing, I thought, hey, it might be fun to make a review of the show using Brendan's typical 10 Words or Less structure. And then I didn't. But I seem to have accidentally started making YouTube videos, so I figured, hey, maybe I should revisit this idea. And then I probably still didn't. But hey, there's a chance I didn't get distracted or bored and someone is actually watching this. And in that case, the way I'm going to do this is that I'll start with a 10 words or less review of each episode, and then transition into a more in-depth review of the series as a whole. So, without further ado... Call me... Ban. These characters have way better chemistry than they should. The doctor is a fraud! Death isn't a real PhD! Rest up, you've done a lot of good today. Second verse, dumber than the first. All's well, that goes horribly wrong. Slow first half made up for my awesome second half. So that's all of them. If you want to know how I feel about the series as a whole, I think it's a low 8 and I recommend you watch it. Here's a list of episodes ranked from best to worst, but I'm not going to count them off individually. And if you're just here to see the 10 words or less part, you can click off the video now. It's basically done for you. But I'm going to spend some more time talking about the series more in depth, so please stick around for that. But without further ado, time for the full review. I don't know why I did that. In terms of positives, I think the show really nails its comedy and characters. The comedy is probably unsurprising to anyone who's watched Brendan's channel, as the comedy style and quality are pretty similar between the channel and Epithet Erased. There aren't many jokes in the series that I don't think are at least good, and there are a lot of lines that are insanely quotable. Hello, this is the cops. Hi, I'd like to go to jail. And there are a lot of moments that crack me up every single time I watch them. The game of mental chess has already begun! First, Counterattack with reverse psychology, the most basic tool in a psychologist's arsenal, and also our greatest weakness. And once he's caught off guard, I'll swoop in for the kill. Knight takes rook, bishop takes pawn, sheep to e5, beef to d2, rook takes sheep, sheep takes beef, 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 sheep, beef, 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 sheep. Um, is he dead? He's just been standing there, not blinking for 40 seconds. But I think the more impressive thing is the characters. They all have incredibly strong personalities, and that makes up for the fact that only a few have good depth. Also, the show only has like 8 important characters, so the ratio of depth to no depth isn't that bad. And the strong personalities are what the comedy is mainly rooted in. It never feels like the writers are just telling you jokes they thought of, but rather the characters are just naturally bouncing off each other in ways that just so happen to be hilarious. And the characters all have amazing chemistry with each other. Every single character pairing leads to amazing jokes. The best pairing, by the way, is Percy and Ramsey, followed by Molly and Giovanni. Even the weakest character, Sylvester, who feels like kind of a ripoff of Edward Elric but more smug, has some really good chemistry with the characters he shares scenes with and moments that could only come from him, like that neurotic twitching clip I showed you. And he has a really good design, so even if you don't like him that much, it's still fun to watch him. And that's another thing, the show's visual design is completely on point. Everything is so colorful and lively and it just looks amazing. Especially the characters, who have some of the most entertaining designs I've seen in a while. And the art style, along with the way the characters move, gives the series a nice distinctive style that really feels unique, and it's nice to see shows like this that branch off from the standard art and animation styles we see so frequently. The show also has some really good little details, like the supply cabinet is open in a way that the two separated doors say SUP and LIES respectively, and in the first scene you see this in, Giovanni, whose epithet is SOUP, is on the SUP side, and Mara, who's lying about being a museum employee, is on the LIES side. Or how this mid-episode screen says that one of Molly's two friends was in the museum, and if you rewatch the series after seeing them in the last episode, you can't find them. But if you look a little closer, you realize there's a painting of Finica in the background. To be honest, that's most of the positives I can say about the show without just evolving to pointing to everything on screen and being like, I like that. So I'm just gonna say that all of those positives run throughout the whole season and are great and move on to the negatives. But it's actually kind of hard to criticize the show because Epithet Erased was created under a very strict time and budget. I think Brendan said he had like a year to work on the show and had to pay for a lot of it out of pocket. And since a lot of the show's issues have to do with the animation, this could very easily devolve into insulting the crew for their work when they did everything they could with the restrictions they were given. That said, I also think the issues will impact the viewer's experience with the show regardless, and having production issues like that shouldn't entirely excuse the flaws, because at the end of the day, the flaws will still impact people's viewing experiences. So to compromise, I'm going to criticize as nicely as I can, attempting to explain the production team's side of things and just explaining the impact that the issues have on the viewing experience and suggesting ways that I think they could be improved. 
Though I also don't know much about animation, so take my suggestions with a pinch of salt. And if anyone who worked on the show sees this, I apologize for anything stupid, rude, or terrible I might accidentally say. So Epithet Erased uses three different animation styles at different points. The puppetry style, which I would consider the main style, wherein the characters cycle through a set number of poses that they sorta of snap between. The map style, where the camera looks down at the characters, who are represented with headshots, from a bird's eye view perspective and looks a lot like a D&D &D map. And the fully animated style, which is just traditional full animation. Each of these styles have their own flaws with varying degrees of severity, so I'm just gonna go through them one by one. First, the puppetry style. I really like this style. I think it makes the show feel a lot snappier and it's really expressive. I think the main flaw with this style is just that it doesn't really feel complete or like it's as good as it can be during fight scenes, but that's probably just because there wasn't enough money to pay for like 20 new poses for action or enough time to get the action scenes looking perfect. So the only real solution for this problem is to hope that the crew is given more time and money if there's a season 2. Then there's the map style. I don't think this style really works. All of the characters are kind of stuck with one expression so they can't visually emote, and while the show tries to fix this by stretching the icons, I don't think it really works. It's also kind of boring to watch. It doesn't really feel like there's much going on, even when there is. It's clearly meant to mimic the style of a tabletop RPG, and it does that, but it kind of comes to the detriment of everything else. And the thing is, this was probably done to save time and money, so I can't really be mad about it. All I can really do is suggest that the show attempt to phase this style out as its budget increases, which it hopefully will. Then there's the fully animated segments, and this might surprise you, but I actually think this is the worst style. Now the animation itself is not bad, in fact it's pretty good. The issue is that it's an epithet erased. There are two very short sections of full animation in the whole show, and they both come at the end of the arc, and because of this, the audience has spent enough time with the other animation styles that suddenly shifting into full animation is incredibly jarring and pulls you out of the story to remind you, you're watching a show. What's more, the full animation has a very different feel from the other styles. The second segment especially feels a lot slower than the incredibly snappy and fast-paced puppetry style. On top of that, using full animation for the most important moments basically tells the audience that the show thinks its normal animation styles are inherently worse than full animation, and a show really shouldn't be telling its audience that it thinks what it's doing is bad like that. It makes Epithet Erase feel like it's trying to be something it's not, as opposed to embracing what it is. I would recommend that, if a second season gets made, Brendan and the other people working on the show take the money they would use to pay for fully animated segments and instead use it to improve the puppetry style and phase out the map style. One thing I feel more comfortable criticizing because it doesn't seem to be the result of time and budget limitations is the narration. In every episode, the characters talk about what they're doing as they're doing it, and it's never really necessary. It very much feels like the writers don't trust the audience to figure out what's going on based on the sound effects and animation, so they have to spell it out for you. But they really don't. The animation and sound effects always show what's happening very well. It's very easy to know what's going on without the narration, so the narration makes it feel like the show is talking down to its audience. I get that it's there to make the show feel like it's a tabletop RPG, because it's based off one, but the show is not a game of anime campaign. There are things that will work in a recorded tabletop RPG session that will not necessarily work in a TV show. If the writers really wanted to keep the narration, they could have found inventive things that required narration to do. They could have used comedy that required narration, but they... The show sometimes makes jokes in the narration, but there's only one instance I could find of a narration-based joke that wasn't already being expressed visually, was actually funny, and couldn't have been easily changed into dialogue, and that's this joke from episode 1. Ben stares with blank eyes. Eyes one might compare... to headlights. Beep, beep. I think that making almost all of the narration be like this would really work and would genuinely add a lot to the show. Though there is one other option that I could think of that would make the narration worthwhile, and that's to use it to reinforce character perspectives. Like have Mare's narration reflect how constantly frustrated with everything around her she is, or have Giovanni's reflect his naive view of his own villainy. But the show doesn't really do that either. Every character's narration is written like it could be for any other character, and the only personality in the narration comes from the fact that it's describing the characters who do have personality. For example, take this clip. He menacingly walks over to the potted plant and, to show that he is a certified bad dude, kicks it as hard as he can! <laughs> This has a bit of personality, as it's describing something Giovanni is doing because of his personality, but it doesn't really feel like it's reinforcing Giovanni's personality. If it was, the narration would be something like, Giovanni demonstrates his unstoppable evil villainy by destroying an innocent houseplant that would never hurt a fly. That way it feels more like the character is talking, not like a narrator who happens to have the same voice as the character is talking. 
But overall, the show's flaws are pretty minor and forgivable, and they don't detract from the show too much, except kind of the narration. I do really hope these flaws will be fixed if a season 2 ever comes out, but even if they aren't, the show will still be pretty great. And if you haven't seen Apathet Erased, you should. It's on Verve and on the Jello Apocalypse YouTube channel. And if someone who worked on the show is watching, again, I'm really sorry if I said anything stupid or rude. You did great work on the show, and I love it. Thank you.